Rick got emotional last night when talking about Lucas Giolito and Reynaldo Lopez. And probably, like, this is a real statement that this thing that I built didn't work. Exactly. The, what they represent, it isn't just names. And I know that uh, Lucas is really, and, and Ronaldo, they're both really well-liked guys. Mm -hmm. But what it represents, that they were, they were young, talented prospects. They were, were young. Don't sing. Like, is, what was a battlefield? Do, yeah. Okay. We stand. No promises, no demands. That's right. The 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 symbolic value of moving on from them is unmistakable. It means something didn't work and it crashed. It means a lot of things didn't work. If you're at the place where and for some reason, like I I'd love to know is it just that you don't want to pay pitchers? Like how long have we known that the White Sox were going to trade Lucas Giolito? At least a year and a half. It's felt like this is where this is going, that this relationship is going to end. And it always felt stupid to me that it would. This is exactly the type of dude that you should have as part of whatever you think winning culture is. Just, I, I, well, he's not a hurt middle reliever. So that's a good point. You're not going to pay that guy. Got to resign with a three-year deal, but it. I don't want to get started down the road of of the 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 Larusa fiasco. It was just all too bad, and this is they deserve to be here. They earned no, this. I'm I'm not saying that they don't. All I'm saying is that for whatever reason, there seemed like someone over there had it in for Lucas, because we kept hearing the leaks and. Oh, he's unhappy about this, and they're far away on this, and he's a guy that they're going to trade. Like, and they nickel and dimed him on the the arbitration. Yeah, and and it it just never seemed to make sense. Like, he's exactly who you would want to be, kind of up front in representing you. This is uh, longer form what Rick Hahn had to say about the deals. Quite frankly, it was a. Uh, uh, mildly emotional conversation with Lucas a few moments ago informing him of the trade obviously uh, given this club's performance over the course of the last several months it's uh, apparent that these type of moves have to take place given where we're at and putting us in the best position we can be going forward uh, that said uh, obviously Lucas's and Ronaldo's tenure with the White Sox is not ending in the way that we envisioned when we first acquired them uh, and I complimented both of them, not just on uh, their performances on the field, but the players they were in our clubhouse and the way they represented them and themselves in this club off the field, which uh, meant a great deal over their tenure. Uh, and they will, they will both certainly be missed and certainly both uh, can help make that uh, Angels team better positioned for hopefully a postseason run for both of them. Uh, in exchange, we're excited that we are uh, acquiring uh, both uh, Edgar Caro as well as Kai Bush. Uh, Caro, as you saw in the release, is uh, one of the more highly regarded catching prospects in the game at age 20, switch hitting catcher, uh, who is one of the youngest players in double A. Uh, who, uh, this year has posted more walks than strikeouts and continues to uh, develop as a, as a game caller uh, and is viewed by the industry, as you've seen from other publications, as, a, as one of the top 100 prospects in the game. Uh, Kai Bush, left-handed starter, also at AA, was in the Futures game a year ago. Uh, Kai had uh, a lat strain that derailed the start of his season, and then I believe there was a small groin issue while he was rehabbing from that, but now is back at AA, throwing consistently, and uh, he provides a four-pitch mix, a uh, quality left-handed starter, someone with some, uh, uh, some upside, and obviously adds to uh, uh, that category in our, in our organization. So that's Rick Hahn breaking it down for you. Switch hitting catcher. You already have one of those, but he's old. And it's a position that you don't have a ton of depth in your minor leagues. Sebi Zavala is, is a perfect second catcher. Like no reason to mess with that. Perfect second catcher for you. If you're Rick and you're thinking, okay, well, I have to get this thing together for us to be a contender next year. Cause that's what he's selling. That's what he's out here saying. 
Mm-hmm. I start. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what he's mm-hmm. saying. Mm-hmm. That's they. That's what they want. So here, here's the thinking. All right, maybe I don't trade Cease. I got Cease, Crochet, and eventually Bush is going to be in my rotation. No. All right. No. I, I don't. Th- that's not no? realistic. No. Why is that not realistic? And Kopech. Forgot about him. All right, let me give you. This is just four paragraphs that that uh, Joe Sheehan just published on. Right, his, I'll have a Lorna Dune. His evaluation while you have a Lorna Dune. Maybe just maybe we can stop talking about a Shohei Otani trade. The Angels became the first big buyer of the 2023 cycle, sending 20 year old catcher and rated prospect Edgar Caro and 2021 second round pick Kai Bush to the White Sox for Lucas Giolito and Reynaldo Lopez. Giolito hasn't had the bounce back campaign I'd predicted hosting a 446 FIP, highest since 2018, and averaging less than six innings a start. Giolito likely bumps Chase Silseth out of the Angels' six-man rotation, and I project that to be worth about 10 to 12 runs to the Angels over the rest of the season. That's likely about one win. As with all deadline trades, variance swamps everything. Giolito would join Otani and Sandoval as a formidable 1-2-3 in the playoffs. Lopez is the sneaky ad here for an Angels bullpen that's 25th in MLB in FIP, 23rd in strikeout rate, 26th in strikeout to walk percentage. After coming into the season as the projected closer in the absence of Liam Hendricks, Lopez allowed six homers in his first 15 appearances, lost his leverage role. But since the start of May, Lopez has a 2-4-3 ERA, a 3-5-5 FIP, just a pair of homers allowed, and just one in his last 28 appearances. I'm a big, lopey guy. Pedro Grifol has been using him occasionally in multi-inning stints with considerable success, including Sunday in Minnesota. Lopez hasn't allowed a run in a month and has struck out 11 of the 24 batters he's faced back to July 6th. Now, the White Sox season is over. And with Giolito a free agent come November, the Sox were motivated to get what they could. They did very well here. Caro is a rare switch hitting catcher who has hit 246, 386, 332 with more walks than strikeouts in his first exposure to double A. I like that. He's thrown out 27% of base dealers in his career, making him Johnny Bench in today's game. Caro, a Cuban, could be the next in an impressive line of Cuban stars on the South Side, even if the power never comes. Caro immediately becomes the top Sox prospect. How about that? Though Colson Montgomery still has his backers. Bush, a college lefty, has missed all but eight starts this season with oblique and groin injuries. And when he has pitched, he's been terrible. Sounds about White Sox. A 7.20 ERA and a 42 to 15 strikeout to walk ratio in 30 innings at double A and rookie ball. Bush is more floor than ceiling. Now, Listen to this conclusion. Hmm. The Sox will need floor and innings as they navigate what could be a rough few seasons on the comeback. Track. Well, not according to them, Dan. I, I just told you they think they're going to be contending next year. That's adorable. That's what they think. A rough few seasons on the comeback trail. Let's see. You got Dylan Cease and you got Luis Robert and you got Parts of Eloy. Jake Berger's going to hit 25 home runs this year. Andrew Vaughn is Frank Thomas. So, mm-hmm. seems pretty good. And if all these guys have career years, they'll be great. There it is, studs. Everybody That's how you do the White Sox shuffle. The 80th percentile of their outcome possibilities. If all of them, and they never do, of course, but if all no. of them stay healthy and outperform, they could be great. Is hey, Mike, guys, it's a, it's a winnable division. It's always a winnable division. Is Mike Clevenger healthy enough to make a start so they can trade him? I haven't heard his name. Like, I keep seeing him in the dugout, and I'm like, ugh. But is he healthy enough to make a trade and they could send him away? No. Could they just send him away? No. Hmm. Would you trade Tim Anderson? Sure. You can. I mean, I'm going to break that club. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to add people for next year. You You're know, talking about the Cubs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, like, yeah. Why sound now? They got to, even the parking lot guys got to go. <laughs> I like the parking lot guy. I, I actually really like the parking lot people over at White Sox, too. 
don't trade the parking lot. They're guy. very, they're very nice, and they they know what's going on. <laughs> they, they really do. Well, they'll tell you. 